If you're here, that means you must love to study herbal medicine. I do too, and after over two decades of learning about herbs, there's still so much to know and experience. In the first episode of season 10 of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, I'm sharing the best ways to learn about herbs plus herbal remedies. And my goal is that this episode can be a pathway to help you study herbal medicine in the best way possible. Hello, and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. To start off season 10 of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, I'm sharing some of my favorite and best ways to learn about herbs and herbal remedies. I'm also highlighting some of my teachers and mentors, as well as some of my favorite herbal books. Guests in season 10 will be asked the question, who have you learned herbs from apart from the plants? Here in the US, there's an amazing amount of opportunities to study herbal medicine, whether it's through traditional in-person schools, online schools, books, and other available offerings like this podcast and YouTube channel. I love that learning about herbs has become so popular because I think this world needs more herbalists. In fact, we need a lot more herbalists. We live in an era in which the standard form of medicine for chronic disease is failing the general population. And while we as herbalists aren't doctors and we shouldn't pretend to be, there's no doubt in my mind that herbalists can help a wide variety of people through education about herbs, as well as counseling on broader lifestyle issues from diet to movement to meditation to time spent in nature and on and on. I've lost a fair number of loved ones to chronic diseases that were mishandled by Western medicine. And I know I'm not alone in this. And I often wonder, would those people still be here if the ways of the herbalists were better known? If they'd been given information on how to actually strengthen and support their bodies rather than simply given pills that suppress their symptoms. In other words, we need more herbalists for the sake of our individual health. But we also need more herbalists for the sake of our planetary health. As herbalists, our hands are rooted in the earth. Many of us become advocates or even simply examples of that nature connection inherent in all of us. The more our world becomes entrenched with screens and plastics and this false worldview that we are somehow separate from nature, the more easily humanity is able to ignore the havoc that this is wreaking on our planet. The simple act of using a leaf or a bark or a root or a flower to initiate healing is a profound way to remind people of our connection and reliance on the world around us. So yes, we need more herbalists. And step one in the best way to learn about herbs and herbal remedies is to learn from the plants themselves. Herbalism isn't just about information that you read or hear and then memorize. Instead, it's most powerful when it's something that you experience for yourself. To study herbal medicine, you need to spend time with the plants. This can mean sitting with living plants that grow near you, as well as making and taking herbal medicines. Plants might not give you a verbal lecture on their uses and gifts, but they do tell us a lot by how they taste and how they feel when we work with them. The traditional study of herbal energetics comes to life when you actually taste the plants. And in many systems, herbs are broken down into categories based on their taste. In my first book, Alchemy of Herbs, I list the herbs in the book according to their taste of pungent, salty, sour, bitter, and sweet. Each taste has its own qualities and properties that can then be matched to you as a person and or a condition that you might be experiencing. 
Over 113,000 people have already bought Alchemy of Herbs and have also highly rated it on Amazon. Thank you so much. And if you haven't picked up your copy, you can get it wherever books are sold, or you can even check it out at your local library. Okay, to sum up step number one of the best ways to learn about herbs, it's crucial to learn from the plants themselves by spending time with them in their many forms. By the way, this is why I almost always include a recipe with every podcast episode, because it's not enough simply to listen to me or the guests on the show, but instead the magic really emerges when you work with and taste the plants for yourself. Okay, the second step in the best ways to learn about herbs is to figure out what you want to learn. There are many different aspects of herbalism and having an idea of what you want to do can help guide your studies along the way. Maybe you'd like to learn about common herbs and how to make herbal remedies with them for yourself or family and friends. Sometimes this is referred to as being a home herbalist or a kitchen herbalist. Maybe you'd like to grow or wildcraft your own herbs for making herbal remedies, or perhaps you'd like to work with people one-on-one -on -one to help them with more serious health issues and have your own clinical practice. It's also good to know what type or kind of herbalism you want to study. Some people want to learn about chemical constituents and science-based herbalism. Others want to learn more about traditional methods of herbalism, such as Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, humoral medicine, and so many more. Some want to learn more about nutrition, others want to learn from the worldwide Materia Medica, while others just want to learn about the plants and herbs that grow in their own backyard. And of course, your interest could be a blend of all of these, but it's good to have an idea of where to start. Because if you're really interested in herbal energetics and traditional ways of working with herbs, you won't want to sign up for a strictly science-based class that's mostly looking at individual constituents of herbs and vice versa. As you can see, there are many different interests and paths to being an herbalist and knowing what you want to learn is a great place to start. The third step on the best ways to learn about herbs is thinking about how you like to study herbal medicine. What type of formats do you best take in and retain information? Also, simply what's the most fun for you? Here's some questions to ponder. Do you learn well from simply reading course materials? Is it better if you have regular assignments that you get feedback on? Do you learn better from audio presentations or visual video presentations? How much interaction do you need or want with the instructors and or your fellow students? How much time do you have to devote to your herbal studies? For example, do you wanna be involved with your herbal studies from every day or just from time to time? Do you have the discipline to finish long distance courses that are self-paced? Do you need or maybe want deadlines? So I love being an herbal teacher and I truly believe that my success is seeing the success of those who study with me. So when my co-teacher Emily Hahn and I were creating our online course Rooted Medicine Circle, we knew that most people don't exceed entirely with a DIY approach. And we also know that studying herbal medicine by yourself just isn't as fun. So we created Rooted Medicine Circle with a variety of learning styles in mind. All materials are available written, but there are also videos too. We also host live classes so we can make all of the medicines together. We give feedback on assignments, and if students choose, they can sign up for a certificate path, which then has deadlines for completing materials, which helps hold people accountable. We also host regular meetups and book clubs and have an online forum. So there's lots of opportunities for students to interact with each other. So there's really a community for people to learn and grow with. So I realize I might sound like a bit of an infomercial right now, but Rooted Medicine Circle only enrolls in January and we fill up every year. So I promise I'm not trying to twist your arm here, but instead I'm showing you the possibilities out there for online courses. Of course, there is a waitlist for Rooted Medicine Circle, and I will include that in the show notes in case you're interested. But really, I wanted to contrast that with many other online courses out there that are all pre-recorded information, and you never hear from the teacher directly, which is actually great for folks who just really thrive on doing things on their own, and they aren't looking for a community to study with. So to reiterate, it's good to know how you like to learn so you can find the best way for you to learn about herbs and herbal remedies. 
Okay, the fourth consideration when thinking about how to study herbal medicine is to consider cost and your budget. There are lots of cheap herbal medicine courses out there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good. Even though they're cheap, they could be a waste of money. And there are lots of expensive herbal schools out there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good. So when finding a school, figure out your budget and be sure to get all the costs up front. Are additional supplies necessary? Are there required books? Does the herb school require travel or any on-site participation? And while finances can certainly play a major role in deciding where to study, don't make it the only criteria for where to study. Know what you want and then find a high quality herbal school that offers what you're seeking at your price range. You can also inquire about scholarships and work study. I did a four year program at the East West School of Herbology and the only way I was able to afford it was doing their work study program. So that meant in addition to going to class like six to eight hours a day, I also did dishes for three hours a day. And it was hard, but it was so worth it and I'm really grateful that I got that opportunity. Of course, there are cheaper ways to study herbal medicine than attending a school or even taking a course. There's many fabulous books out there, websites, podcasts, and all of these are generally either free or they cost very little. When seeking out those types of information, always look to the source. Who is the author, the teacher, the presenter? Where did they learn their information from? What's their mission? Are they trustworthy? The reason why I bring this up is because your herbal teachers will influence you for the rest of your life. So really seek people with wisdom who inspire you. A great way to check out herbal teachers and authors is by finding interviews or recorded classes with them. For a small fee, the American Herbalist Guild and Tree Farm Communications offer a plethora of audio recordings taken from conferences. And this is a great way to learn as well as a great way to preview your prospective teachers. Of course, I've interviewed many herbalists on this podcast, and I plan to keep doing that. Another thing I want to mention is, if possible, prioritize local teachers. They will know the most about the plants in your area, and it's really important to learn the plants in your area. My first three years of study was as an apprentice to Karen Sherwood, and we spent most of our time in the field, you know, outside, getting to know the plants around us. And it was really a transformative time for me, and I highly recommend studying with local herbal teachers. Whether you're studying herbal medicine through books, through podcasts, or directly with teachers, really prioritize resources with what you want to learn. And if you're primarily interested in growing your own herbs and making your own remedies, then you really don't want a thick textbook on herbs for chronic illness and pathophysiology, right? And vice versa. All right, as a reminder, don't let price be your only consideration when choosing when and how to study herbal medicine. All right, the fifth step in the best ways to learn about herbs is to hear from fellow herbal enthusiasts, especially when it comes to picking a school or teacher. So once you have some herbal medicine schools in mind, get in touch with some of the current and past students to hear what they thought of the program. What were their expectations going in? Were those expectations met with the school? What were their favorite aspects of the school? What were their least favorite aspects? What did they find the most rewarding? What was the most challenging? And ask questions in public forums or groups for people to share their experiences with that school. You can also contact the school directly to find someone to talk to. Keeping in mind, they're probably going to hand select someone who's going to have a really positive experience to share, but really ask specific questions and talk to more than one person. So sometimes when people study herbal medicine, they think they need to be a certified herbalist or get some kind of certification, maybe a licensed herbalist. So here's what's important to know about that. While many herbal medicine schools offer certificates or something to show completion, these are actually not legal documents that grant any kind of special rights. So having an herbal certificate hanging on your wall might be important to you to showcase or validate your education uh, just to yourself or to others. But again, legally speaking, it doesn't signify anything. Herbalism isn't a licensed profession with the exception of some acupuncture schools, they might license you know, within a Chinese herbalism degree. So unless you wanna graduate from an herbalist acupuncture school, there's really no such thing as an herbal license in the United States. 
the closest thing that herbalists have in the United States towards a standard recognition is to be professionally registered herbalist of the American Herbalist Guild. And I'll include a link for the American Herbalist Guild guidelines for professional membership in the show notes. Another question I get from folks who want to study herbal medicine is, is it necessary to go to an accredited school? So again, because herbalism is not a licensed profession, it's not necessary to go to an accredited herb school unless you want to use grants or qualify for loans or get your college degree. Generally, accredited schools are going to cost tens of thousands of dollars, while non-accredited schools cost a fraction of that. So if you're not interested in a college degree or using grants, then I think it's more important to find an herb school that offers the information that you want from a teacher that you like, rather than looking for an accredited school. It's also common to see people wondering if they should seek out a certain title, like becoming a master herbalist. So I like to think of the term master herbalist as someone who has studied and practiced herbalism for decades. In other words, while we never really master herbalism, this can be a term that's bestowed onto herbalists who have really committed their lives to herbalism. But unfortunately, this term has been used as a marketing tool for various herbal schools, and it's often given to people who study for a couple of weekends or even for a year. But the point is that when someone uses that title after their name, it doesn't really mean anything specific because there's no set requirements for getting that title. And I want to be clear that I'm not saying that someone who chooses to call themselves a master herbalist is a bad herbalist. I'm just saying that it doesn't automatically mean that they're a fabulous herbalist. And I definitely don't recommend choosing your herb school because you get a master herbalist certificate. Also, just something to keep in mind that this is a very contentious issue within the herbal community and announcing yourself as a master herbalist to a lot of herbalists can really um, cause a heated discussion, both because the term master is something that's being re reevaluated and simply the lack of respect for that title in general. Okay, the last step in the best ways to learn about herbs is a bonus step. And it's for those of you who want to become clinical herbalists and work with people one on one to help them solve their health problems. So in order to do this, you'll need years of thorough studies ranging from everything from materia medica to pathophysiology. And as you start to actually see people in your practice, I think it's necessary to have a clinical mentor. And this is someone who can oversee your recommendations just for a while and lend wisdom and experience to more complicated cases that you may have never seen before. If you go to a clinical school, they may offer this as part of their program. And if not, you can find clinical mentors listed on the American Herbalist Guild website. My clinical mentor was Carter Pritik Singh Khalsa, and I learned a tremendous amount of practical ways to work with herbs and people through my many years of studying with him. And I just really can't even imagine my herbal life without that mentorship. And those of you who might know, I did have KP on the podcast. He gave a great overview of migraine. So if you haven't listened to that, check it out. To finish up, I'd like to share some of my favorite books to study herbal medicine. There are truly so many fabulous books out there that I just can't list them all here, but I do have a thorough list of my favorite herbal books broken down by subject on my website. I'll link to that in the show notes. So for beginner to intermediate herbalists, I have three book recommendations. The first is Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs. Rosemary is a personal hero of mine and for so many others. She was actually the first guest on this podcast and she wrote the foreword to my first book, Alchemy of Herbs. And her book is just a great place for people to start. And then Alchemy of Herbs is my second and obviously biased uh, opinion of a second book to recommend to a beginner to intermediate students. Alchemy of Herbs is about transforming everyday ingredients into foods and remedies that heal. It highlights about 30 herbs and it shares how to use herbal energetics to choose the best herbs for you. And the third recommendation in this section is Body Into Balance by Maria Noel Groves, who is a fantastic clinical herbalist and teacher who's also been a guest on this show. 
And this is a great book for looking at body systems and really a holistic approach to using herbs for diseases. If you're interested in wild crafting or harvesting your own plants, then anything by Samuel Thayer is gold. Most of his books are for more Eastern United States, but I've learned a lot from him, even though I live on the West Coast. So lots of pearls of wisdom and just really thorough information there. My second book, Wild Remedies, which I co-authored with Emily Hahn, is about how to forage healing foods and to craft your own medicine. It's beautifully illustrated and has a variety of different recipes from food to medicine. And yes, I realize it's a bit cheeky to recommend my own books, but I, when I wrote both of these books, I was writing exactly the books I wish I had during my early years of study. For herbal safety and herb drug interactions, the gold standard is the Botanical Safety Handbook. This is a really thick textbook and it's fairly expensive, but it's also super thorough, like I said. I often reference this book uh, when I write my own monographs and videos, so you'll see I include that information always. My most influential book of my life is Easily Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I've read it many, many times, listened to it, fun on audiobook, and right now I'm even hosting a book club for it right now in our Rooted Medicine Circle class, and it's a book I think every human should read. Okay, so again, I could list many, many more books, but if you're a book lover and you love herbal books, then it's just best to head over to my website and see the full list. Thanks so much for being here. Don't forget to head over to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com where you can get any of the links that I mentioned, get a transcript of the show and other resources. You'll also be able to sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is the best way to stay in touch with me. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes, and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. So thank you so much for your support through your comments, your reviews, and your ratings. I read every review that comes in because they're like a little herbal love letter that brightens my day, like this one. I love listening to this podcast. It makes me feel like I'm sitting on the back porch with some friends, a breeze, and some herbal tea or lemonade. Soothes my nervous system, fills my brain with expansive knowledge, inspires creativity, and brings joy to my heart. Do you love this podcast? If you leave a review for me on Apple Podcasts, I may be reading your herbal love letter on the show next. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. There's always opportunities to learn about herbs. One way that I started to memorize herbal actions was from this poster in my bathroom. So twice daily, I'd brush my teeth and I'd look at the poster so I could memorize what an expectorant was or a diaphoretic was. So in other words, one of the best ways to learn about herbs and herbal remedies is to just immerse yourself in the herbal world and create learning opportunities throughout your day. Thanks again for being here.